Malaysia's Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin as his new cabinet has been sworn in. It comes after weeks of political turmoil that saw the collapse of the ruling Pakistan Harapan coalition. Several politicians from the former opposition party, UMNO, have returned, including Hishamuddin Hussain and Khairi Jamaluddin. Now, Mr. Goh has been speaking to Malaysia's new finance minister, Tunku Zafrul, about his priorities. Now I'm with Tengku Zafro, a familiar face in Malaysia's banking sector with 20 years of experience. Now he's been just been sworn in as senator and will be helming the finance ministry portfolio. Tengku Zafro, congratulations. Thank you. Thank what you. do you see as, uh, as the biggest challenge in your uh, tenure? Well, um, actually, I have officially haven't started yet. Uh, just been sworn in, as you said, uh, as the senator here. Uh, the biggest challenge today, not just facing Malaysia, but facing all the countries globally, uh, is COVID-19, and, and 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 more recently, yesterday, uh, we've, we've seen the markets uh, react to the uh, so-called challenges on the oil sector. So my focus uh, will be to address some of these uh, challenges, but the key focus uh, will be really looking at coming out with policies that are swift and fast right I think what we don't have is time uh, we need to get back the confidence uh, so that we can make sure that the economy uh, is ready I mean the country is ready to face uh, these headwinds mm. you said yourself that you are no politician mm. you're a banker you want to fix the economy and regain confidence. But do you think you were going to have the political stability to do what you want to do, given that this government is still, you know, being challenged by Pakatan Harapan Coalition, has yet tested its majority in parliament? Yeah. So, polit I mean, I leave political uh, issues aside. The focus today for me uh, is really to make sure that we are ready to navigate through this storm, right? Uh, I'm not a politician, um, I'm a technocrat, um, and I believe I'm brought here uh, by the Prime Minister to focus uh, on the challenges that we face as a country. A closer look now at the developments in Malaysia. We're joined by Adib Zalkapli, director of Bauer Group Asia. He's speaking to us from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, firstly, anyone that stood out for you in this new cabinet? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, the appointment of uh, former CIMB CEO uh, Tengku Zafro was a big surprise. Uh, but I guess it was a strategic move by the uh, Prime Minister to uh, depoliticize the office, uh, if you like. Um, as you know, the ministry was plagued by uh, various uh, financial scandals in the past. And under the previous Pakatan Harapan uh, administration, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, it functioned uh, a lot as a uh, campaign platform against the uh, then opposition parties, especially AMNO leaders uh, who were uh, implicated in the financial scandals. Uh, so bringing in a banker, a veteran banker, would hopefully allow the uh, ministry to focus uh, solely on its core functions of uh, raising revenue and uh, allocating the public funds to various government services. Adib, efforts to depoliticize the office notwithstanding. The new cabinet does see the return of several familiar faces from UMNO. In your view, how does that line up sit with the public? Well, the Prime Minister has partly addressed the concerns uh, by not appointing leaders who are UMNO leaders who are currently on trial. Uh, however, for the Pakatan Harapan supporters, uh, uh, a lot of them feel very uh, disappointed uh, to see the return of the politicians that they voted out not so long ago. Uh, so I think there's a lot of work uh, to be done by this cabinet uh, to regain or to win over a public trust and uh, to, I think, hopefully uh, implement or adopt some of the Pakatan Harapan's uh, uh, good uh, elements like uh, reform agenda, uh, fighting corruption uh, in order to properly win public trust and also to uh, maintain legitimacy of the government. Are those the biggest challenges you see then, sort of uh, winning the trust of the people? How prepared are, do you think that they are for the task? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's just one of the many challenges. Uh, another big uh, challenge for this administration is to uh, hold the coalition together, uh, making sure that the government could last uh, at least until the next uh, general election. Uh, because at the moment, the coalition looks like a marriage of convenience. Uh, so. I think what they need to do in the, uh, in the immediate term is to uh, come out with perhaps an ideological foundation for Prikata National to, to guide the members of the administration. A marriage of, of convenience, you say, but 
it, does this formation of the cabinet signal an end to this political turmoil that's gripped the country? Well, I, I guess for, for the time being, it looks like it's the, the best possible outcome. Uh, it looks like they're stabilized. Uh, the prime minister made some uh, unprecedented decision, like not having a deputy prime minister to uh, reduce tension or political infighting among uh, senior members of the coalition. So I think my view is, I think this is the best outcome given the circumstances and the uh, fluid nature of uh, coalition politics in, in Malaysia at the moment. All right, Adib, thank you very much for that perspective. We've been speaking there to Adib Zalkafli, the director of Bauer Group Asia.